and welcome back to uh, Titwood in Glasgow, the home of Clydesdale Cricket Club, where I'm afraid we've just missed the first over uh, for various reasons beyond our control. Uh, but uh, welcome anyway, and uh, you're uh, about to see Safian Sharif bowl the second over. In the first over, bowled by Ian Wardlaw. Uh, the Dutch got off to a rapid start. Uh, Michael Svart scored uh, a boundary four to square leg. Here's Sharif to Svart, and they're going for a quick single here, which indicates what's going on. And uh, at the other end, in the first over, Stefan Mayberg. Um, left-hander got a, a brilliant drive through extra cover for four just uh, on the last ball of the first over. So that was the first ball of the second over from Sharif and uh, I'm being joined at the commentary desk here by Anton Roux who's the Dutch coach. Welcome Anton. Thanks very much. And uh, it's quite plain to me from watching the first over that first of all you want to get the get the sc scoring rate up quickly, and uh, hopefully hopefully will last 20 overs before the rain arrives. Yeah, there's there seems to be a little bit of uh, unsavoury weather on the way, although uh, we're not too focused on that at the moment. Uh, it's quite natural for these two players uh, to play a little bit of an attacking uh, first 10 overs. So there's uh, Sharif to. Uh, Mayberg, who uh, gets an under edge onto the ground. A wicketkeeper is Mark Petrie, who was called in at the short notice because uh, of the injury to, uh, um, to Matthew Cross on Monday in practice and yesterday's uh, temporary occupation of the wicketkeeping slot by Callum McLeod. Here comes Sharif again to Mayberg. And uh, that's a very good ball, just short of a length. And uh, Mayberg did well to avoid touching it, I think. Yeah, Sharif uh, yesterday proved to be a quite a tricky customer for us. Um, uh, the boys uh, spoke to each other just before coming out uh, this afternoon for the chase, uh, speaking that, you know, to have an extra eye on, on Sharif. Very good delivery, that. Sharif again to Mayberg. And that's a nice shot off the back foot by Meinberg, and they take a quick single. So, uh, 318 to win, Anton. That's quite a, a tough ask, I suspect. It is indeed. Uh, I think um, the wicket is pretty good enough, uh, for, you know, for us to get that. There, there's a small boundary um, to our immediate left that I think we can look to target uh, in, in our chase. But it all comes down to these first 10 overs. And here's Sharif again, fifth ball of the over, and Svart turns it round to square, and gets another single. And the key to this is to uh, keep the scoreboard ticking, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, the first 10 overs of, are pretty vital for us as, uh, in our chase, because that's when you're only allowed to have a two men out the circle. So if you get onto a bit of a roll in the first 10, it, it sort of keeps you in, within touching uh, distance of the run rate at all times. The middle period stays the middle period, and then hopefully in the last 10 overs we can uh, look to get the runs. Last ball of this over, and that's been turned by <laughs> Mayberg down to a fine leg. Another single, and that makes four singles off the over. Takes the score to 14 for no wicket. It's a good start. Do you actually, as the coach, do you actually give uh, the, uh, the batsman a, a target in 10 overs? Um, with with uh, the swat Maibu combination, I, I tend not to give them any targets. Uh, they're quite free-flowing batsmen in their own right. So I leave a lot up to them uh, to assess the conditions and, and the type of bowling that they face. And You know, they've played enough enough cricket in their careers to, to realise what's, what's a good score in the first 10. So, you know, they're in charge of, of, uh, of the first power play. Indeed. Uh, well, uh, Mayberg is now facing the second over from Ian Wardlow, the third over of the innings. And uh, there again, there's no doubt, he just pushes the ball out into the covers and calls for a single. And uh, that's the way it's going to be until they get uh, a ball pitched up so they can drive. And uh, it means uh, a lot of field placing <laughs> changes between balls as the uh, batsmen go from right hand to left hand on alternate balls. And uh, more fielding changes first of all, so, because the captain's got to make sure that uh, only two players outside the circle. All gets quite complicated these days. Here's Wardlaw, and that one's allowed to go through by Svart. 
So, tell me in between overs from time to time, Anton, uh, what the situation is with the the Dutch coaching setup because obviously there've been changes in the past few months. Um, and uh, what are, what are the purpose of the changes? What what's going to happen? Um, yeah, quite a, f a tr few tricky uh, last months that that we've had as a as a playing staff and coaching staff with um, the departure of Peter Drinnen. Um, but you know, I've been in, I've I've been with the team now for four seasons, four years uh, as assistant coach and analyst. So the transition into interim coach has has really been a smooth one. Um, and the, the the future, you know, not only for myself or for for the team, uh, you know, is a little bit uh, uncertain at the moment. So we're just waiting to 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 see uh, and come up with a few dates from the ICC when the January Division Two tournament is, and I'm sure. Once that's known, we can start planning uh, planning ahead properly, uh, um, you know, to get to get our way back back into World Cricket League. So, are, are you the fully fledged uh, appointed na national coach now, or there is there still a possible? Uh, 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 you, you would have to probably speak to <laughs> the people at uh, the, the Canes V to, to to find out uh, what my exact role is. But at at, at the moment, I am uh, I'm I'm interim coach. Yes, interim coach. Okay, well, that's fair enough. And that was another. Uh, straight ball from Wardlaw, which was uh, parried down by Myberg. Uh, score is 16 for no wicket for the Dutch in response to Scotland's daunting task, daunting total of 317 all out with three balls to spare in the first innings. So 318 to win and you got off to a good start with uh, uh, 16 off uh, th two and a half overs. Yeah, I, th I think. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I think if you, if you look at uh, as we as we watch uh, the bowler running in, yeah. Yeah, Wardlaw to Byberg, and Byberg this time, uh, I think gets a, a slight uh, edge, not not well timed. So no run for that one. Um, yes, you, you were going to say 318. How how do you approach a total like that as a team? Well, the, you know, there's 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 a few certain uh, you know areas in the game where where you block out to. You know, to make most, make up most of your runs. One is the first ten, being the power play. Um, what we've done as a team is we've we've tried to break up the middle period um, into two sets. Uh, that's the 25 overs, excluding your batting power play. Wardlaw into Myberg here plays it a bit uppish, straight to mid off uh, for no for no run. As the first drops of rain start falling, uh, I can feel a little bit over here. Yeah, as I was saying. Um, uh, we're looking to break up the middle period into two slots, uh, including our power play. So, depending on what we get uh, in the first ten, we try and work it back from uh, the, the total uh, uh, required, and then we try and come up with a few targets and, and suggestions of what we're trying to do in the middle period. Okay, let's just pause there for uh, uh, a short break before the next over starts. And welcome back to Titwood, uh, and thanks to our broadcast sponsors, Prosperity Financial Solutions and uh, Cast Accountants. And here comes Safian Sharif, his second over of the game, of the innings. Nice straight ball, and uh, uh, Michael Sfart, the, uh, the Dutch captain, just fends it off. Um, Michael is an imposing figure in the field. Yeah, Michael. Michael is uh, is Michael, I suppose. Uh, a big character all the way from, from from Perth, who loves his fishing, and of course loves his batting. Shaif again, and uh, that's a forceful shot into the uh, mid-wicket area, only for a single. Um, what was noticeable about Swart's captaincy in the first innings, um, as Peter Boran wasn't uh, playing because he's injured, uh, was the incredible amount of bowling changes is that a plan or is that uh, simply reacting to events on his part yeah look I think we, you know you 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 go into every game with with a certain blueprint of a plan that you want um, as Sharif runs into Mayberg over here 
And that's a big hit. Is it going to make the six? Yes, it is. That's a six, a nice straight six from uh, Mayberg. Very impressive shot there. Yeah, great shot. Uh, lofted straight back over the bowler's head for a beautiful six. It cleared the boundary rope by about uh, 20 centimetres, I would yes. say. <laughs> Against a pretty strong wind, but yes. uh, definitely. Six is a six. Well, since you mentioned the wind, let me... Uh, Apologise in advance to viewers if uh, they are hearing a lot of wind noise in our effects microphone. Uh, nothing we can do about that, but here's Sharif. And there's another six, that's to square, and that is wind-assisted. Goes straight into the uh, grounds of the Hutchison's Grammar School next door and uh, wanders over on the uh, uh, artificial running track uh, as well. Somebody is already on, on uh, site to collect the ball. So it won't be too much of a, of a delay there. But the running track is being used, I'm told, by uh, uh, one of the uh, competing teams in the Commonwealth Games that we're about to have in Glasgow in three weeks' time. Nice. Uh, and, of course, the hockey pitch on the right, you might be interested, yeah. is going to be used by all the competing hockey teams in the uh, Commonwealth Games competition. Oh, beautiful. As a practice uh, venue. Anyway, here we are again with uh, Sharif. And uh, that's a straight drive for four. So this is an expensive over for Sharif. Yeah, Marburg uh, really getting into his own now, uh, starting to time the ball quite nicely. Well, that's 17 off the over so far, and one more ball to come. And the first drops of rain beginning to be felt. Yeah, sorry, just to come back to your previous question about the um, the bowling changes. You know, uh, we, we come into each game with a bit of a blueprint of what we're trying to achieve, but you know, ultimately on, on the park it's the, the captains and the players' responsibility and they have to react to, to what's been happening uh, out in the middle. Yes, indeed. Well, that's another impressive shot. Uh, a square cut off the shoulders by Mayberg there. He's gone through for two and uh, going through for three. Quick single, they have to hurry but uh, the ball is not on the stumps and uh, Mark Petrie has to back away from the stumps to take that particular ball. So that uh, is 20 runs off the, the one over. Takes the score up to 36 uh, for no wicket after four overs. That's a pretty good run rate. <laughs> and uh, what do you think they'll be saying to each other, the batsman in the middle at the moment? Well, of course, you don't want to focus too much on uh the rain that, that that could or can be on the way but if uh, you know the, as I mentioned earlier these guys are experienced enough and um, they probably just keep saying to each other wickets in hand um, you know you don't want the duck with Lewis to jump too much with the fall of a wicket so with that over there we've just got 20 odd runs off it uh, that probably look to solidify the next couple um, and then hopefully build towards a nice total after the first 10 overs. Okay, while we're waiting for the next over to begin, a uh, quick uh, rundown of the Scotland scorecard. Kyle Kurtzer was caught, uh, I've got to get this again, Svarczynski, bowled by Ashen Malik for 22. Callum McLeod, who uh, has opened the innings with him, was still there with just a couple of overs to spare. He made 145 absolutely superb runs. Habish Gardner was caught by uh, Baresi, the wicketkeeper of Malik, for two. Uh, Preston Momsen was caught by Svart, uh, bowled by Malik for 45. Uh, Richie Barrington had another unfortunate innings, caught Svart off the bowling of Van Mikaren for one. And here's the bowling from... And that's a brilliant ball and a brilliant catch. Well done, well done indeed from Gavin Main the new bowler in that particular one, which I'd only just noticed. 19-year-old uh, first ball in senior cricket. That's something, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. A great way to start uh, your senior senior career for Scotland. I'm sure you'll be delighted with his first wicket. Uh, Stefan Myberg taken for 27. Here's the replay of that. And uh, the ball uh, rose steeply, went away from the batsman slightly and got an edge to uh, Mark Petrie, just pushing the glove. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, with a few drops of rain falling, it's just greased the top of the deck, um, and, and the short ball probably ended up rushing him a little bit too much uh, um, for that shot that he chose to play. Well, what an opening for Gavin Main. That's a sensational start. 
Uh, but to finish the uh, Scottish, uh, the yes, the Scottish scoreboard, Josh Davy came in. He was uh, caught swart, bold Malik for 34. Um, Michael Leesk, Leesk, he was caught by Wazim off the bowling of Bukhari for three. Safian Sharif was run out brilliantly by Ben Cooper for 14. Mark Petrie made eight, caught Svasinski off the bowling of Malik. That was his sixth wicket. Uh, Gavin Main was the last man out, bowled Bukhari for one, leaving Ian Wardlaw not out eight. 34 extras, of which 10 came from two balls, two overhead wides. Now, what about that? Yeah, don't uh, don't remind me of that. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's really sinful. It's something that uh, um, I myself, as a coach, pride myself on with uh, having you know a disciplined uh, a team out there in the middle. But uh, you know, one of the deliveries uh, steepled a bit and went over the keeper, unfortunately for five wides, and it's just part of the game, I suppose. And uh, the rain has started to fall fairly heavily now. I don't think it'll be long before the players come off. Uh, will come off shortly, I would guess. The umpires will have to take notice of this. You can't play on in this kind of conditions. And uh, if so, we'll uh, probably relocate ourselves because we're, we're yeah. outdoors and uh, we'll try and find a, a space that's uh, a little bit less exposed. Yes, I think that's a good uh, good idea. It's quite uh, been a contrasting two days uh, yesterday compared to today. Yes, uh, that's not unusual in these parts. <laughs> <laughs> I got told yesterday by one of the groundsmen, uh, I, I, I joked him and said, uh, this could possibly have been my best day of Scottish weather and he turned around and looked at me and said I think in my 68 years of existence it's been the best of <laughs> the best that he's seen as well so absolutely it was that uh, Cyril McClatchy our groundsman he's, <laughs> he's just completed 26 years of uh, groundsmanship at Clydesdale <laughs> and he's had his fair share in fact more than his fair share of rainy days to compete with so it was a a, a a good change for him yesterday to be able to just enjoy the cricket yeah I'm sure groundsmen love those type of days where they don't really have to run on and off with the covers and and all sorts of things. And this is Wazim that's facing, isn't it? Yes. And uh, now tell us a bit more about him, an ex-Test player for Pakistan. Yeah, Wazim has played 17 odd Tests uh, for Pakistan as a youngster. Uh, got 194, I believe, on debut. Oh. Um, after that, he sort of struggled to really cement his place in the Pakistan team, which is unfortunate for him, I suppose. But you know, he comes and brings a wealth of experience uh, with him. Um, he's also a very calm and quiet character, so he brings uh, uh, you know a lot of knowledge and expertise with him. And here's Gavin Main again. Oh, that's another one that... Uh, did he get an edge to that, do you think? We'll wait and see in a minute. No, that looks like a... Uh, yeah, it's a it's buys, pretty, pretty buys. similar to what, you know, I yep. was talking earlier about that one delivery that Paul from Akron bowled was short of a length that just seemed to go through the top and, and go over the keeper's head. And, uh, you know, that, that one seemed to, to, yeah. do, to, to, to behave pretty similarly. Absolutely, and Wesley Baresi, who's uh, not particularly short, uh, was finding difficulty <laughs> with that kind of thing. Mark Petrie is a bit shorter hit than Baresi. Yeah, nowhere near him. Yes. Well, we're having we're having a bit of problem with the, uh, the camera that we use behind the bowler's arm, which has uh, got a lot of water on its uh, lens. But we'll try and do something about it shortly. And that's a wide ball. No, no ball. A no ball. Free hit for uh, and Mohammed free Wazim, hit yeah. to follow. Yes, be interesting to see where he lines this up. Uh, being a subcontinent player, I've no doubt that he's probably eyeing out the leg side with a nice little flick of the wrists. So Gavin Main, the end of his first over, and that has gone for four over the heads of the uh, slips and the uh, wicketkeeper, as we've seen so often today. Uh, that's a free hit, of course, so that was a, a good way to finish the, uh, the over. He got a wicket with his first ball, and there's been eight runs since then. No, nine runs with a no ball, so that should make it 45 for no wicket after five overs. Now, what are the umpires going to do? Are they going to make them play on for a bit more? Yeah, the rain, I wouldn't say has stopped, but it has definitely eased a little bit uh, from about two minutes ago. So yes. I think the umpires are willing to give it a little bit more of a go. It's now what we would say, describe as spitting with rain. Yes, absolutely. And we've got a change of bowling here again now. Uh, following the, the, the pattern and, uh, yeah, Michael Leesk coming on to bowl. From the pavilion end. 
Kyle Kurtzer marshalling his fielding. Yeah, Michael Liske yesterday bowled a pretty decent spell against us. Picked up a few wickets. Wouldn't call him a top-class first-grade spinner, but uh, does 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 a job for a captain. However, he did uh, he did well with the bat in the North Sea Pro Series, where you absolutely involved yeah. with those, presumably. Yeah. Um, the first time I saw Michael Lee says he bowls his swat here. Um, the first time I bowled, uh, saw Michael Leesk was uh, in the Pro Series, and, and actually just before that, the innings that he played against uh, um, England in the ODI, um, you know, really got us looking at him. And that's uh, a ball that was treated with respect by Michael Swart, the Dutch captain. It's always nice for players like Leesk uh, to, to, you know, get on that stage and showcase their skills and. I'm sure we'll see a lot more of this uh, young fella. Here he is again, and that one slightly leggish, and uh, was pushed nicely out to mid-wicket by Swart for a single. And that brings uh, Wazim, Mohammed Wazim, to the uh, business end. Former Pakistani Test players we were hearing just now, but uh, presumably had to qualify residentially for. Uh, for the Netherlands, yes. Yeah, um, he's he's uh, got a Dutch passport, so he's he's been staying and living there for quite a f quite a few years now. And that's firmly pushed out uh, down past the short mid wicket to mid on. Yeah, that's the uh, flick of the wrist. So uh, I was talking about earlier. He prefers the leg side play, and he's, he's very strong in that area. Yeah. Um, Wazim uh, plays his domestic cricket for the club called Dosti, which is uh, in, in Amsterdam. Leesk now to Swart, no run, they're getting through the, the overs quite quickly. Now. Yeah, yeah, of course they're trying to get uh, close to the 20, 20 over mark as quick as possible yep. for, for there to be a game. Both sides have an interest in uh, a result. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the, you know, these, these three fixtures uh, organised by the two, um, the two cricketing boards have been you know, uh, it was just top draw. You know, it's very vital for us um, in preparation. Oh dear, that's what with a life after Ian Wardlaw dropped a very, very straightforward, simple catch. Michael Swart trying to chip the ball over Mudoff, um, didn't quite time it straight into his hands and it's... Yeah, the only excuse can possibly be that the ball will be slippery after that uh, yeah, shower could, of rain just there. Be, yes. But uh, it was a very straightforward uh, catch. He didn't have to move either sideways or forwards or backwards. So that's a bit of a disappointment for Wardlow. Um, yeah, these, these matches have no official status with the ICC um, and that's uh, because uh, uh, the Netherlands don't have ODI status at the moment, and that's one of your main targets to get back into that uh, level, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. It's uh, unfortunate, uh, unfortunate that we um, didn't play very well in our uh, trip down to New Zealand, which um, we lost our ODI status. But you know, as mentioned earlier, you know these three games, you know, Scotland are using it as their preparation uh, for the World Cup. Uh, coming up and these three games for us are also very important to, to try out a few combinations and and get our act together again for our for hopefully our reintroduction into World Cricket League. Gavin, Gavin Main now and uh, that one's been forced into the offside by Mohamed Wazim no run and the, rem the score remains at 46 for one in the seventh over of this response by the Netherlands to Scotland's score of 317 all out in the final over of their innings. Uh, certainly the Dutch uh, will be very anxious to keep the running rate run rate up because this match probably won't go much longer than 20 overs. If they manage to get to 20 overs it counts uh, as a result and uh, from then on the um, dreaded Duckworth Lewis comes into operation which will keep us all on our toes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone including the coaching staff and all the players, yes, absolutely. Gavin made again, well played. Uh, Wazim decides to take a quick single on that uh, shot. Now, um, 
When, how soon can the Dutch cricket board get back into the ODI stakes? Well, it's it's not a hundred percent clear uh, as of yet, but what we've um, uh, sort of earmarked is there's a tournament uh, in the early part of January, which which will be the the Division Two tournament, and I would think that the top two teams, the two teams that get into the finals, um, would then get promotion back into World Cricket League. Um, that you know they'll play. Uh, part of the the tournament that uh, lasts for two years or so um, against all the other ODI nations. Gavin May to Michael Swart and straight into the hands of yeah, Hamish Gardner. Was that off? It hit the ground first, did it? No, it was a no ball actually. Oh, it was a no ball. Yeah, front See, foot no ball. Yeah. yeah, front foot no ball. So that's a free hit again. Yeah, absolutely. Another lifeline for Michael. Who? Uh, but uh, certainly Hamish Gardner. I mean, he took the ball beautifully. Yeah, didn't great uh, re reflex catch, uh, straight to him, but he's still got to take those. Let's see uh, what Michael Swart will do here with his free hit. Backs and away and uh, yeah, opens the blade of the bat and sp spews the ball over cover. And that's four runs into the wind, uh, nicely uh, lofted. Uh, into the deep outfield by Swart. Yeah, you know, these days with uh, the thickness of the players' bats, they only need to get a little bit of the ball on, uh, bat onto it and it uh, sort of screams away t to the fence. So you were talking about the uh, the time yeah. scale for getting back to the ODIs, and I have to say, it, it always it gives me a shock to hear you talking about Division Two in the Netherlands because I've never come across that before. Yeah, I mean, make no mistake, the, we, we are deeply... Uh, um, I, you know, disappointed and 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 hurt, to be honest, uh, of what happened in New Zealand. And I wouldn't say that each game we're playing is is trying to prove a point, but you know, the, we, we've set ourselves a few goals, we've set ourselves a few targets, and what we're trying to achieve in the next few years, and how we want to get back into World Cricket League One and and regain our ODI status, as as it's it's quite financially uh, important for, for for all the associates involved. Absolutely. But more so for a bit of respect, you know. Um, well, that that is true, and uh, I said yesterday and again this morning at the beginning of the uh, uh, broadcast that both sides had a point to prove because uh, while you uh, f um, missed out on the uh, World 2020, sorry, the 5050 uh, World Cup. Uh, Oh goodness me! He's that seemed to be an unjust decision by umpire Alex Dowdles, uh, but he's been given out LBW, and that uh, does seem a little bit harsh to me. I don't know what you. Think yeah, there. Uh, we unfortunately don't have the uh, the replay in front of us here, but um, possibly could be outside the line or a little bit of height involved there as well. But I would have to ask my uh, my anal analyst uh, to have a look at that and uh, then make the judgment call. So it's Mohamed Wazim LBW uh, to the bowling of Michael Leesk for six, uh, 53 for two now, uh, the Dutch response, and that seemed to be just uh, a little bit uh, of a dodgy decision, and I can speak as a friend of Alex Dowdles <laughs> and a fellow umpire. <laughs> um, anyway, that uh, brings to the uh, crease um, Wesley Baresi, the wicketkeeper for Holland, for the Netherlands, and uh, what did he make yesterday? I can't remember. Well, we'll Wesley was uh, was uh, unfortunately run out yesterday from that oh, nice yes. direct hit. That's right. That was Barrington's yes. finest moment of <laughs> yesterday's game. Um, yeah. Well, the I was saying y you had missed out on the World 50/50 Cup. And Scotland had failed to qualify for the World 2020, which you, in which you did so well, as you often do. So both sides have got a, a point to prove in these games. Yeah, I think uh, you know, having looked at the two squads, um, you know, we mentioned earlier before we got to Scotland that it, hopefully it should be a, a very good series with two strong squads playing against each other that that have a bit of uh, recent history uh, uh, against one another. And, and as it's turned out to be, yesterday was a fascinating game to watch, with uh, the ebbing and flowing of of uh, shifting of momentum from one side to the other and today we saw a brilliant hundred by um, Callum McLeod and uh, getting into a very competitive total of 317. Least now to the new batsman. Baresi very confidently playing that back. 
and what I've seen uh, in the past as, as, as coach of, of this Dutch team is that when we, when we end up chasing targets like this, it sort of frees up the batters a little bit more in, in, in when we chase totals of 180 to, to 220 or so. Well, that's true, and, and Scotland have never uh, underestimated the Dutch ability to... Uh, oh, goodness me, there's a muddle up here. And uh, Michael Swart finds himself at the wrong end, having been called for a run and uh, didn't uh, go back. And he's been given out... Well, uh, umpire Eric Young is deciding which batsman is out. Oh, it's not, uh, it's not Michael Swart. It's, it's Baresi. Is that right? I got. Yeah, Baresi must have uh, left his crease. Yeah, Baresi had left his crease, yeah. but uh, I still think he got back before, before Swart got back. I'm not absolutely certain of that, but uh, sure. anyway, Baresi is the one that's been told to go by uh, umpire Eric Young. And uh, so he'll not be very happy. Um, the wicket keeper looks looking a bit down, but uh, yeah, disappointed uh, that Wesley's been run out uh, in, for two days in a row, and no doubt he'll be he'll be hurt for quite a few days after this. Yes, that's that's not good. Baresi run out for no runs, 53 for three, and uh, it illustrates again the dangers of. Uh, seeking quick runs that uh, an awful lot of uh, uh, basic errors of judgment can happen and without surprise i mean uh, nobody can blame uh, anybody particularly there but uh, it's a big target to go for and the target is quite big in 20 overs even yeah, absolutely i think you hit the nail on the head there with the with the word basics you know uh, that's just part of the game of, of of being of doing your basic stuff right so very annoyed uh, with that dismissal but you know it's it's sport and it happens and it's it's all part of the game michael leesk now to the new batsman who is who oh swart swart at that end it's swachinski at this end yes yeah eric swachinski is right. the new batter <laughs> and uh, for the spectators in the ground there is a a Duckworth Lewis target in the top left hand window and at this stage of proceedings the target is 70 at the end of this over uh, which is not going to be achieved because that is the end of the over and uh, the Netherlands are 53 for three wickets after eight overs still Still early days yet, uh, the Duckworth Lewis tends to be ahead of the game, doesn't it, in the early overs? Yes, it is, and I think as, as, as players, you know, you need to find the balance of, of trying to, to keep the Duckworth Lewis in mind, but also not to try and think of it too much, you know? So well, indeed, uh, because the, uh, the fall of wickets affects the Duckworth Lewis target uh, quite severely. Absolutely, which, which makes the, the, the previous dis dismissal that much more annoying. Yes, to illustrate that, I've just looked up the Duckworth Lewis table and at the end of the ninth over, which is about to begin, uh, the target is 104 <laughs> for three wickets. Yeah, so it, it jumps pretty sharply after a fall of each wicket. Oh! Barrington, is it? That was Barrington, but it must have bounced, surely, or did he, did he just no, drop it? Yeah, no, it bounced... Uh, <laughs> Cut the ball straight into straight into the the turf. The Br turf. Brilliantly rescued one from a four, direct four, the one-handed stop by Berrington. Yeah, great stop at backward point. Well-timed shot there by Eric Sosinski, first ball that he's faced. But an equally better stop at backward point by Berrington. Yep. Well, Gavin Main. This time uh, Swazinski cuts again and bounces just short of Barrington with another great stop. Unfortunately, uh, he, could, he couldn't stop the batters from crossing over for completing a single. Well, the rain has uh, dried up, if that's the word, although the uh, outfield now is wet still, and uh, there's Swat driving to mid-on, just... Uh, Straight to the fielder, no run. Another no ball. Another front foot no ball, which uh, gives Michael Swart another free hit. 
Well, Gavin Main, until recently, under 19, very um, eager to get the, <laughs> get every there, advantage. There, in his in his uh, defence, there is a slight uh, uh, rise in slope uh, as you. And again, Swat drives the mid on this time. The mid on uh, deflects it uh, further out into the outfield, so there's an easy single there. Yeah, just coming back to the to the young bowler, there's a slight little rise, uh, the, uh, the, you know, to the stump, so he could be just overstriding the last few lengths of his run-up, which means uh, that he's overstepping the front line. So, Svachinsky this time facing Gavin Main and plays respectfully. Albert goes for the quick single as. Uh, the Dutch try and get uh, their innings moving again after losing a couple of quick wickets in the previous over. Yeah, you know, Eric Eric is not as uh, free-flowing batter as, as the previous th uh, three guys we've seen uh, playing, so he'll bring a little bit of steadiness to the ship, so to speak. So the last ball of Gavin Main's over. Oh, I've forgotten the no ball that happened, so uh, <laughs> one more ball to come. Michael Swart seeing a little bit of width there offered by the bowler, unfortunately couldn't uh, capitalise on it. And here he comes now again. Michael Swart facing, turns it down to short, fine leg. Safian, Sharan, Sharif. Oh! <laughs> Safian throws it in, goes past Mike, Mark Petrie, and the return throw almost goes past him again. And that's the end of the over. And we've got four, 58 for three wickets on the scoreboard. With nine overs having gone. So 10 overs, one more over of power play to go. Yeah, one more over. I think uh, runs-wise, it's it's been a pretty fruitful 10 overs for us. Unfortunately, we've We've lost the three wickets, which which we've uh, already pointed out that it makes the Duckworth Lewis score spike through the roof, so to speak. But um, if if you look at the the score of, of 58 after nine overs, it's a pretty good start and a pretty good foundation set by the guys to to carry on forward. Indeed, and uh, Duckworth Lewis, I think, goes up by another couple of runs uh, at the end of this over as Michael Leask prepares to bowl to Michael Swart. Swart turns it round to fine leg. There's no fine leg beyond the circle, but there's only going to be a single. In terms of general, the general health of Dutch cricket, uh, how would you assess it down the, the ranks? You've got plenty of people coming out. Uh, there, there are there are a few uh, youngsters that we, that I've got my eye on uh, that I've involved in the national setup for the for the past few months in the lead up to the Scotland series, but I've obviously unfortunately missed out on selection. But uh, yeah, definitely there's a, there's a few guys um, that are putting their hands up um, to be noticed. But you know, international cricket at, at this level is quite uh, demanding, and um, and the level is 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 a lot is a lot higher than than club cricket back home. So the focus for those guys and and what I've communicated to them back home is is you know I would like them to see to start seeing them dominate a little bit more at, at club level before before they make the big step step up to international level. As a coach, I've got a a responsibility on their careers as well and you don't want to throw in a guy in, in into the cauldron so to speak when when he's not quite ready well very wise words there uh, Scotland of course are uh, also giving youngsters uh, plenty of opportunities at the moment but uh, they have the uh, incentive uh, the, the youngsters have the incentive of uh, the entry into the World Cup 50-50 World Cup in February and uh, there's all to play for in this season for everybody yeah, of course. Uh, building up to a World Cup is an amazing feeling, and and everyone is putting up their hand, wanting to to catch the plane out of here, uh, the long flight journey to Australia, which which I'm sure will be filled with butterflies and excitement. So, the boys are, are pulling out all the stops to be involved uh, in that squad. I'm sure. 
Well, that's the end of the 10th over for the Blues, the end of the power play for the uh, uh, for the Dutch there. So the score is 59 for three wickets. Um, only one run scored off that over. And that means that uh, instead of just two fielders outside the circle, uh, the Scots can now put four fielders if they wish outside the circle, but makes it a little bit more difficult to find the gaps for the batsman, but uh, they'll be well used to that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the tactics of the Scots now, if they spread the field immediately, or if they would look to protect the boundaries. Um, I would think if I were in their position, I would keep the field in a little bit longer to put a little bit more pressure, excuse me, pressure on the, uh, the opposition. Um, but hopefully we can counter that with a few more attacking strokes. Well, Michael Sfort about to face the bowling of Gavin Main. He's the Dutch captain for this particular game, so he'll want to lead from the front. He's on 17 at the moment, and Svarczynski at the non-striking end has just come in. He's on two not out, 59 for three. Uh, the game in the balance, but uh, bearing in mind Duckworth Lewis, the target now is 108 at the end of this over and uh, that's almost double what's on the screw on the board at the moment so Svart takes his single yeah unfortunately yesterday Michael Swart uh, could not uh, kick on from his beautiful 60 that he got yesterday and I think uh, today was a good example of you know from Callum McCloyd uh, getting a good start and and really pushing on and getting a big hundred and, and that, you know that tends to be the difference between setting up targets of of 250 280 and eventually they got to close to 320 good lesson to be learned because I think yesterday Callum also gifted his wicket away to us which 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 started the rot uh, uh, so to speak absolutely and that's another good ball from Gavin Main but uh, slightly wider and Svachinsky declined to play a shot at it You've always got to make the batsman play at this level of the game. Yeah, with a new ball, you're looking to uh, to put in an area of uncertainty for the batters. Uh, hopefully, get it for fuller length to make the ball swing as much as, as as possible, and hopefully, looking for some seam movement. <laughs> well, I think the wind has dropped just a little bit. I'm trying to get hints here, but what happens when the wind drops on this ground is the cloud gathers and stays on top of us and drops all its rain on this ground. Oh, in my little <laughs> uh, uh, knowledge of um, UK weather or the Scottish weather is that... Uh, and oh. that's uh, another brilliant catch by uh, Bennington denied by a no ball yet yeah, again yeah another no ball shame for the the poor fellow started off with a wicket first ball in his uh, senior career and has now gotten another two wickets off uh, front foot no balls absolutely uh, as a youngster and, and I, used to, I used to coach youngsters in my younger days no balls were the bane of my life as a coach yeah uh, it's you know it's part of the basics of the game but uh, you know I'm sure the, the the guy's got a lot of adrenaline running th uh, pushing through him so he's charging into the wicket a little bit more as mentioned earlier with that little rise at uh, at the wickets here he runs in for his ball to Swazinski that one's turned to leg will only be a single because there's a square leg out there ready to field it and uh, that's uh, Michael Leesk out on the boundary at square leg I'm sure the young man will will look back on today and learn from his experience and his mistakes and I'm sure speaking with the coaching staff um, that they'll set those things right uh, in the near future. Yes indeed, here he is again and that's an edge which eluded Purston Momsen at the slips but I suppose could go down as a technical chance but it, it uh, was deflected wide of Momsen and went for four to the boundary. Michael Swart uh, living a pretty charmed life at the moment and getting away with a few no balls and edges here and there. Keeps the scoreboard ticking nonetheless. It certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps the interest and the excitement in this game yes, up. Yes, absolutely. What can Gavin Main do this time? Ah, well, a nice normal ball just outside off stump and uh, Swart plays it into the covers. Yeah, I, I think we were talking about the weather a few moments ago and uh, what I was trying to say was 
you know, it's very unpredictable weather here in the UK, uh, in this, in especially in Scotland. I would, I would, I would think. So I, I tend to hold my judgment on the weather in 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 check. Um, I, I I do get updates every now and then, but they also change within every two minutes. So, well. Uh, frequently in Scotland we have all four seasons in one day. <laughs> yes, I've, I've heard of that before and uh, we've experienced definitely the two uh, uh, extreme extremities in the past uh, two days. So hopefully for the spectators and for, I would think for both sides alike, that the, the rain does stay away and we get to see a good game of cricket to develop over here. Well, the Scotland captain, Carl Kurtz, has decided to bring Pace back on at the pavilion end, Safian Sharif coming back for a second spell, probably just as short as the previous one, because that seems to be the fashion these days. Here he comes to uh, bowl to Svajinski, and a uh, bit of bounce from that off a fairly full length ball. Yeah, just every now and then uh, the ball seems to to get a bit of extra bounce out of the out of the deck, either a bit of either it's hit the seam or or sometimes, you know, a lot of the times these bo the bowlers these days bowl cross-seam deliveries, you know. And Svachinski goes out to do a bit of gardening, but uh, also the, there'll be, after the rain, there'll be a bit of moisture in the top surface here. As Sharif bowls again, this one a wide one, swinging away from the batsman. No run. Undoubtedly, Scotland are trying to push for an extra wicket here to make that uh, total, Duckworth Lewis total, soar through the roof even more. It's Duckworth Lewis at the moment l sitting on 117 is the target for the end of this over and uh, that remains uh, about 90% uh, more than the scoreboard score itself. Here's Sharif and a uh, good piece of fielding in the gully by none other than Richie Barrington again. Richie Barrington has been a bit quiet with the bat, but uh, certainly has been throwing his body around on the field, which is a good sign of a good player. You know, you've, I always say to my players that you've got three opportunities in the game to make a difference. Just because you haven't made runs on the day doesn't mean you can't, uh, you know, put in, put in the hard work for your team in the field. Well, that's uh, absolutely true. As Sharif comes in to bowl to Svajinski again, and this one is slightly uh, glided down to third man deep on the boundary but they only get a single and uh, I think uh, the, uh, there's going to be a, an urgent need for a bit more expansive batting shortly. Maybe Michael Swartz is the person to achieve that at the moment. Yeah, I think uh, as I mentioned earlier, Eric, uh, he's not the most attacking player. At, you know, it's not in his nature. He'll look to get Michael Swartz on strike as, most, as, as, as much as possible. And Swart uh, steps over to the offside in order to uh, push the ball round towards uh, fine leg or wide fine leg. He only gets a single for that, but uh, he's prepared to use his feet to try and get uh, into a physical position to score runs off uh, more or less any ball. Yeah, absolutely. Michael's uh, also an experienced campaigner. He, he's played most of his cricket back in Perth uh, on the Wacker for, for Western Australian uh, state team over there. Sharif again. So he's, you know, he's 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 seen and done it all before. Um, what I would like to see from Michael today is pretty much what Callum did yesterday. Uh, today was a kick on from from a, from a good start, and he's the batsman in at the moment on 23. Uh, hopefully, he can get us into a reasonable position in the middle period, and then, you know, you've got to start playing what the scoreboard dictates. So, still a bit of work to do for us, um, but we're. We're trying to set a good foundation as much uh, as possible. Well, Netherlands 68 for three after 12 overs. Uh, still going at more than five and over on average. Uh, they'll certainly need to push it up because the target is over six and over. Uh, Scotland having scored 317 uh, and failing to use the last three balls of the last over. One of the better scores by Scotland's team on home ground. In fact, the uh, the highest score I think on on home territory since the 350 to win chasing uh, Ireland's big total in July 2011.
at uh, at the Grange, which you will know very well. Yes. Ah, it was a real good betting performance uh, today by uh, Callum McLeod, who, who really showed top order batters what it is like to get a big hundred and, and really kick on. I mean, I, I, I can't keep reiterating how important it is for for batters these days to get themselves into good positions and really, really fill their boots, you know, and get a big score. Well, it was very impressive watching McLeod today. Callum McLeod got to his 50 and seemed singularly unimpressed by that score and worked his way towards three figures, got a little bit stranded by a quieter period uh, in his uh, late 80s and into the 90s, but then reached his 100 with a magnificent straight six, and uh, then pushed on from there until uh, finally falling in the uh, second last over, was it? Something like that? Yeah. Uh, and again, as, uh, as I alluded to earlier, yesterday, I think he also went out for around about the 60 mark there or so, and, uh, you know, I'm sure they would have discussed it that if he batted, he, batted through yesterday, he probably would have won them won yeah. them the game. Yes, absolutely. He'd be well aware of that. But uh, what we have, we have Michael Swart uh, facing the bowling of Josh Davey, who's the new bowler at the uh, Meldrum Gardens end. Here he comes now. And, oh, that's a direct throw by Barrington, as he did yesterday, but uh, the batsman was back, and... Uh, Swart set out again, Svajinski made his ground and so it was only one run. Yeah, Barrington uh, cropping up again in the fielding department. It's really good to see uh, from a coaching point of view how a guy can pick himself up from uh, disappointing with about two days in a row but really trying to make a difference for his team out in the field. Well, he certainly has his radar switched on, there's no doubt about that. Uh, I wonder how much he practices that. Ah, you'd be surprised how, how, how much the guys practice these days of, of those things. I think uh, since the days of John T. Rhodes setting the, setting the bar of fielding standards, everyone has tried to uh, emulate or, or at least copy the, the training methods and, and standards that those guys have set for us back in the day, so credit to the the new generation these days who really throw their bodies around and and uh, they do you know train these things on a on a weekly basis well that's uh, clear from watching them and that ball by uh, Davy was down the leg side it was uh, pushed out to, towards square leg by Svachinsky and then Safian Sharif <laughs> threw a, a grossly overthrown ball which uh, had uh, the Scots fielders scurrying to clear up behind uh, Mark Petrie, the wicketkeeper. <coughs> Into the wind, that throw as well. <laughs> Must be all the gymming that he's been, do been doing. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Sharif was, the, uh, was playing for the home club here at Clydesdale the last two seasons, so he, he knows the ground quite well. But uh, anyway, here's Josh Davy again. Michael Schwartz gets an, an inside edge, which avoids the stumps and goes down to Sharif at fine leg single scored and uh, that's the end of the over again uh, three runs in that over 71 for three after 13 overs and uh, in the 14th over the um, Duckworth Lewis will be 115 which is another couple on top of what's there already it's a kind of, uh, it's a bullying figure, isn't it, the Duckworth Lewis? Absolutely, and but again, I, I, you know, you, you know, as players, you've just got to try and find the balance of how much do you let Duckworth Lewis dictate of what you're trying to achieve out in the middle. So, Sheriff to Swart, who again moves slightly to the offside in order to push the ball out into the gap. And I think what, sure what yes, yeah, absolutely. What, what people have got to realise as well is that, especially from a playing uh, perspective, having been playing so many 2020 cricket uh, in the past few months, 50 of, 50 of us is these days is is quite a long uh, long time out there. So there's a, there's much more there's a lot more time than you think a, as a player. So I think uh, the situation at the moment calls for a little bit of calmness. Well, that's a good ball from Sharif, just uh, rising more than uh, the average and uh, forcing Svajinski to uh, avoid the bat. Now, the, the Dutch have always uh, had one over Scotland 
not necessarily won over Ireland in having had uh, one or two very distinctive victories in World Cup cricket, which Scotland have never managed to achieve. In fact, we haven't been in the 50-50 World Cup for about three World Cups now. Um, is that a source of pride to people in Holland generally? Are they aware of this in, in out of, out of, outside what? the cricketing world? Our record against Scotland? Yes. No, no, your record in the World Cup. Oh yeah, we've we, we, we've definitely got uh, an immense uh, sense of pride uh, in our record at the World Cups. In fact, our build-up to the um, uh, Bangladesh 2020 World Cup was started with um, a video clip. Oh well, <laughs> Barrington again. Barrington again. The man <laughs> Barrington is all over, all over the ball in the field today. Uh, yeah, we started our uh, um, our uh, ascent to the 2020 World Cup in Bangladesh with uh, a video clip that reminded of us of our famous victory against uh, England mm -hmm. at Lords. Yep. Um, which which sort of got the the hairs tingling and the and the bloods uh, pumping <laughs> a bit for the for our guys. And I think the main message there was. If you had to speak to anyone outside Dutch cricket and you ask them what do you think about when you hear Holland Dutch cricket, they always talk about that victory at uh, at Lords as a memorable one and rightfully so. But we wanted to go there and create our own history, you know, and and, and uh, be remembered for something completely different. And little did we know that we were going to beat England again. But you know that run chase against Ireland was was unbelievable. Well, the rain's coming on heavily again now as Sharif Bowles. Uh, to uh, Svachinsky and uh, that's turned down for another single and uh, I would think the umpires will be conferring at the end of this over which it now has uh, umpire Eric Young is determined to go to his crease to his uh, wicket first before having a look at Alec Dowdles who is looking over in his direction quizzically yeah, it must be a real tough one to call, uh, although it is raining a little bit harder than previously, but uh, the wind seems to be blowing and, and swirling around a lot, so they're probably waiting to give it a two-minute grace period to see what happens, and, and if the rain persists, I'm sure they'll uh, decide to come off. Well, quite interestingly, the, the rain seemed to be sloping from west to east just now, and then suddenly turned from east to west. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what the weather's doing at the moment. The clouds are still fairly high. We haven't got a bank of dark clouds, but it's certainly pretty heavy rain. It's just easing off now again as Faczynski settles to receive from Josh Davey in the 15th over. And that's in the air, and that's going to be caught. And that's Michael Leesk, the catcher, for off the first ball of this over by Josh Davey. It's Faczynski out for six. Yeah, the ball seemed to just pop on him a little bit and uh, wanted to work the ball to the leg side, possibly too early with his wrists and got a leading edge straight to uh, the man in mid-wicket. So that uh, makes the task even uh, more difficult for the Dutch here, 73 for 4 now uh, in the 15th over. Does, I, one, one wonders whether it's there's too much um, inclination by batsmen to try and get the ball onto the leg side to push it for runs on the leg side these days. Yeah, again, uh, I suppose it lies with personal preference uh, if, if it's part of the guy's repertoire. In his, uh, in his shot ca uh, making capabilities, you, as a coach, you can't be too, uh, too unhappy and too angry with him. But, um, you know, you've, you've got to try and uh, praise. Uh, praise the guys as much as you can for being, you know, positive. And at the end of the day, they're trying to do the job for for everyone out in the middle. Well, this is Ben Cooper, isn't it? This is Ben Cooper, yes. Tallest man in cricket, almost. How tall uh, is he? Probably not as tall as the Pakistani uh, opening. Oh goodness there. me, yes. <laughs> He's probably about twice the size of Ben Cooper. <laughs> yes, he came to uh, the Grange two years ago and uh, mesmerised the crowd with his height. Yeah, unbelievable the size of that man. So how many metres is uh, Ben Cooper? I think Ben is just over, you know, a good two metres, five centimetres down, yeah. around about there, something like that. Uh, six foot eight in uh, British. Oh, is that? Big appeal there, but uh, umpire Eric Young is not impressed by that, and uh, Ben Cooper is having none of it. 
So uh, yeah, big deflection there, but I think it's a great umpiring decision that it hit the, as it hit the back leg of the bat, the batter. Uh, uh, I think uh, quite we, a few umpires might have uh, been inclined to give the one out due to the deflection that the ball yes, had on indeed. the way to the keeper, but uh, ended up being a very good decision. Let's have a look at the replay now just to see if we can uh, tell from that. It's his back leg that caught the ball and uh, very well spotted by you, Anton. You're listening to Anton Roux, the Dutch coach, who's uh, my co-commentator at the moment. This is Mike Stanger trying to take the lead, but uh, def deferring to the better expertise of Mr. Roux. <laughs> who is not in, incident, incidentally uh, related to the the cooks of this world no no unfortunately not as mentioned earlier but uh, yeah uh, i managed to catch a little glimpse there of the of the deflection on the back pad so uh, once again a great umpiring decision and that's uh, an attempted bouncer by josh davy didn't quite come up as high as he would have liked but it was uh, uncomfortable for michael swore to uh, reeled round to try and hook it uh, there is a a fielder on the boundary square of the wicket uh, and there's one on the boundary and fine leg that one if it had got caught uh, by Swart might have gone between the two of them yeah Michael Swart uh, played most of his great cricket down at Perth and played a few seasons for Western Australia on the on, on the Wacker and so I'm sure he's no he's no stranger to the short pitch uh, delivery well that was a short pitch delivery again from Davy, and this time it bounced a bit higher and gave Swart uh, an opportunity to get his bat behind it and it went straight uh, to Michael Leesk on the boundary, a square leg, uh, which bring, brings the left-handed Ben Cooper back to see if he can survive a second ball from Josh Davey. Yeah, and just having a look at Michael Swart at the other end there seems to be in a little bit of discomfort uh, from their previous delivery from Josh Davey, who might have hit him somewhere in the midriff. And again, uh, Davey beats the bat. I think Cooper took the bat away there. And that's the end of a very interesting over. 75 for three now. Two very attacking uh, cricketers uh, at the crease at, uh, at the moment uh, for the Netherlands. Um, it'll be very entertaining for us uh, to see these two boys kick into their natural flow of things. So hopefully things can uh, can so work for us for the next few overs. Cooper's the younger brother of Tom Cooper, who's uh, been a good servant to Dutch cricket. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, possibly been one of the, you know, arguably one of the best batters that that have played for us in the past few seasons, uh, apart from uh, Ryan and uh, Tom's made a real good impression on our team and and uh, has done really well in the past few seasons and, and rightfully so has been selected to uh, represent Australia A eh, on the upcoming uh, uh, series. And here's Michael Lees back on to bowl at the pavilion end and uh, he does a little jig as he, the ball pitches on leg stump and Michael Swart uh, gets the bat onto it but you never know quite what kind of shot is going to be played there so here's another ball from Lees and this time Swart leaves his crease Again, no run. In a moment, I'm sure we'll see a big shot from from Swart once the ball is right. That one outside the off stump. Yeah, it's a bit tough. Uh, it'll be a good shot uh, to hit uh, straight back over the bowler's head against uh, against the wind that seems to be swirling a little bit around the ground at the moment. Oh, and that's a miss. Oh, for goodness sake. I thought it was a miss stumping, but at the second chance, Mark Petrie, having dropped the ball, uh, gets the uh, bails off before Swart gets back, and that's a big blow to the hopes of the Netherlands of getting anywhere near the Scottish score line, even before 20 overs are up, which is not so very far away now. So Michael Swart, stumped by Mark Petrie off the bowling of Michael Leesk for 27 looking a little disconsolate as he left but uh, there's no question of uh, the wicket being uh, judged correctly
Well, we've just been playing the game of cricket bingo again because uh, the new batsman is wearing, who's one of two batsmen wearing the number 97 on his back. And this one is Michael Rippon, who's come in to uh, take the place of Michael Swart, who was stumped Petrie bold least for 27. Bit about Michael Rippon then. Uh, Michael Rippon is a South African born cricketer who's now playing his trade at uh, a club in, in Surrey. Uh, he played uh, a few seasons, he was on trial and part of the squad in Sussex, so he's, he's got a bit of uh, UK experience about him. And he starts off absolutely brilliantly with a square cut for four. No bother. Yeah, <laughs> As great. I say in this part one. Yeah, nice start to your, your innings, uh, having been dished up a nice uh, wide half tracker there, which, which he puts away pretty majestically through the through the offside. So at least the final ball of his over now, and that's on the target. And Rippon just pushes it out into the short mid wicket area, and that's the end of that over. Five off it and a wicket, so that makes it 80 for um, four wickets. Yeah, Michael Rippon, uh, unique, a unique cricketer as, as he's a left-arm Chinaman bowler. There's not, there's not too many of them around um, in, in world cricket, so it's always exciting to see a, a, a bowler of that, uh, that, that type uh, to, to do his thing in international level. was misled by the scoreboard into thinking only three wickets had been down but it's five wickets down now Welcome back to Titwood in Glasgow, the uh, home of Clydesdale Cricket Club, where, which is staging three 50-over uh, international matches between Scotland and the Netherlands. This week, this is the second one of the week. Yesterday, it was in brilliant sunshine. Uh, today, it's uh, been overcast all day and exceedingly windy, increasingly windy, which is causing problems both on and off the field. Uh, and uh, the third match is due to be played on Friday. And I say due to with very uh, careful word choice because the weather forecast for Friday is not at all hopeful. A lot of heavy rain is, is forecast for this part of the world. But I am joined with a ray of sunshine, by a ray of sunshine in the form of former president Bob McFarlane of the Scottish Cricket Union or Cricket Scotland as it's now called. Oh dear, and there's the wind taking my papers away. But Bob, take over from me and let me know your impressions of the match so far, please. Cheers, Mike, and good afternoon, everyone. Absolutely uh, howling gale starting to blow here now at Titwood, and uh, Scotland uh, with the upper hand at the, very, uh, at the present time. Uh, 80 for 5, now the Dutch after the dismissal of uh, the last batsman there. The DL now sits at 180, so a very tall order for the Dutch to get out of this hole now, Mike. And, uh, uh, 317 uh, looks a long way away. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so there's quick off the mark for 
Oh, no, he got off the mark with a four, didn't he, at the last over. So that's another single for Mike, Michael Rippon. Yeah, Rippon following on from his positive knock of yesterday. His confidence will be high. Very good 49 not out yesterday at the death for the Dutch. But, uh, a much better, uh, more disciplined bowling performance from the Scots today, Mike. And, uh, Indeed. I notice now that Kyle Kutzer's uh, really starting to apply the pressure with two slips in, which at this stage in a 50-over match is um, unusual, to say the least. Yes, you don't see that very often. This is Josh Davy bowling and uh, Preston Momsen, who's frequently the only slip fielder in, in, uh, in the, the uh, circle there, has been uh, joined uh, by uh, Hamish Gardner. Number 48, and Davy again to Ben Cooper, fends off the ball. Ben Cooper, about six foot seven, we reckon. Yeah, he's a big lad, isn't he? He's a uh, big lever there. If he starts to hit the ball, then uh, we could well be in his firing range here because he likes to hit into the V. And uh, I saw him in one of the, the North Sea uh, Pro Series games at uh, Dundee at Fort Hill. Uh, hitting a very impressive uh, 90 or so and some big hits there so he's capable of fireworks. Oh there's a lovely shot uh, all the way along the ground they're going to take a single they have to hurry but the throw is wild well picked up one-handedly by Mark Petrie the wicketkeeper having to run practically to uh, uh, extra cover <laughs> to get that ball. Yeah, Gavin Main getting across the ground very quickly there young man very athletic good pick up and throw and Gavin Maiden's not uh, a small guy either. He must be six foot three, I would guess. Yeah. For a 20-year-old, that's quite something. And that's a very good ball by Davy. Just yeah. moving away from the bat. Michael Rippon deceived. So this game really has been set up by a fantastic uh, performance in the Scottish innings. What uh, What is your verdict on the Callum McLeod innings? Yeah, Callum unusually started very slowly today. Uh, he was happy to let Kyle Kutzer make the early progress at the top of the order. And um, I don't know if that was a result of his wicket-keeping exploits of yesterday, that he was a bit stiff. I know that uh, after the game yesterday, he had a few muscle strains where he doesn't normally have them because he'd been keeping wicket. But uh, once he started to, to play, some excellent shots that he played today and uh, fantastic timing once he got into his rhythm. Marvellous knock from him. Well, I'm sure, knowing Callum as I do, that he'll be the last person to uh, use any kind of uh, physical problems as an excuse for anything that he did behind the stumps yesterday. He got three catches, after all. Anyway, after that wide, that's uh, a single that's been uh, gifted to uh, the Dutch, and that's the last ball of the 17th over, and the score is 85 for five. Uh, two batsmen fresh in, and I'm not quite sure which one is which, but one scored three and one scored six. I imagine six is, uh, I don't know, six will be uh, Rippon and three will be Ben Cooper. Yeah. But uh, the Dutch su uh, suffered a, a major blow in the last over to the one that's just finished when Michael Swart, their captain, was stumped by Petrie at the second attempt off the bowling of Leesk. Uh, having made 27. I think Mark would be quite uh, fortunate uh, there, thinking himself quite fortunate they got a second chance at it, but Swart had given himself up, luckily. Came down the track too far and just couldn't get back. But, uh, really didn't make any attempt to get back. No, he, he thought it was definitely going to be out. Um, however, so it's going to be Michael Leesk again from this end to try and get through the overs quickly so that 20 overs are consumed because the match after 20 overs will definitely yield a result but if the match has to stop before because of rain before 20 overs it doesn't count and that's brilliantly caught oh, over his shoulder by Barrington. Hamish Gardner then. Oh, is, is it? Oh well. Um, just Let's see if we can confirm it. I think, 44. It, was Hamish, I think it was Hamish Gardner. I, I, running back there. Yeah. Hamish Gardner, coming. yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Hamish Gardner, yeah. very good catch, yeah. wasn't it? And Ben Cooper leaves the ground disconsolately.
I think you, like me, Mike, thought that was going well over him, and uh, I don't know whether it held up in the wind, seemed to, but uh, it just landed very nicely for him, but these catches are always difficult coming over your shoulder, and he took that superbly well. Yeah, Hamish Gardner for sure. Well, well done to the Australian. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Scottish born, Scottish born. Born in Brisbane. Was he born in Brisbane? Yes. Uh, here from a very early age. <laughs> Bukhari, is it? I think it's probably Bukhari. Mudasa. Uh, we think the new batsman is Mudasa Bukhari. No number on his back because he's wearing his sweater. Uh, judging by the, the bowler's gait. Can't blame him for that, to do, Mike, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, uh, this gantry seemed to be uh, about 20 degrees warmer yesterday when I was sitting here with Jack commenting. <laughs> and another wicket to Leesk. Yes, another w wicket to Leesk, and uh, Leesk will certainly bowl out from here, I would guess, just to get us over the 20 over. I'll get Scotland over the 20 over mark. Here he comes again, uh, this time to Michael Rippon. No run there. Yeah, another positive step by Kyle Kutzer bringing Leesk into the attack very early in the onslaught and uh, looking to push the overs through and to put a break on the, the scoring. Another good ball turned inward there by Leesk. The Dutch opener's very comfortable against the pace early doors and uh, this introduction certainly put a break on the, on the scoring rate. And that's a nice shot which will go for four and four certain from uh, Michael Rippon, gently eased into the covers but uh, everybody was within the ring and he found the gap and it was going to be four all the way from there on in. Takes the score up to 89 for six but the Duckworth Lewis total target now is sitting at 210 which uh, seems an awful long way away. Yeah, big, of us, big ask. And another straight drive this time, but uh, Safian Sharif is behind it and cuts off any uh, chance of a, a boundary. So Rippon still showing the way. And here we have Bukhari taking guard now for the first ball since he came in. Just one more ball to go from this over from Michael Lees. Here he comes. Bukhari likes to get after the ball as well though, Mike. He's a strong hitter of the ball, particularly in the V and straight. Um, no stranger to hitting the ball back over the bowler's head. Absolutely. I uh, can't take anything for granted one way or the other at the moment, but the score is 90 for six. And uh, that's a pretty good effort by Scotland following their first innings total of 317 all out with three balls unused in the final over of the innings. Yeah, I think the crucial figure there, Mike, is the six wickets lost. Uh, the Dutch bat all the way down, certainly, but uh, they'll be disappointed to have lost six so far in the chase. And that always pushes the Duckward Lewis up as well, of course. Two slips in for Josh Davey, and that was uh, very close to being an edge. A bit difficult to tell from this commentary position, Mike, but I think Davy's getting the ball to jag around a little bit out there. It seems to be um, making full use of the, the green surface. Green surface uh, made greener by the rain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'll help to add a little bit of zip for the, the medium pacers. And uh, Possibly Davy as well, pitching the ball slightly further up than the previous seamers have and looking for a bit of movement as opposed to the bounce. So full credit to him for doing that. So let's see what Bukhari does with Josh Davy because I think Bukhari quite likes the ball coming onto him. Mm. Yeah. So Davy probably planning a bouncer here, do you think? I'd be surprised if it came up first thing. He doesn't carry a great deal of pace, Josh Davy. He's more of a a genuine medium pacer, but... Uh, and that's cut very, very sharply square, and it's going to go for four out on the deep boundary there. The ball was too short from Davy and gave uh, Bukhari plenty of time to get into position 
and uh, put it well away. It's part of what I was meaning there, Mike. He just doesn't really have the pace to trouble people with the short stuff as much as uh, perhaps Wardlaw or Main or Sharif. So let's see if uh, Davy can pitch it better there. And that's a be much better one because uh, that wasn't drivable. Bakari took his bat away and uh, the ball was in that corridor of uncertainty that Jeffrey Boycott loves to talk about. Well, Josh Davy played an important part in the Scots innings today as well, Mike. He helped the recovery uh, when we had a slightly sticky patch with a, a very good 30 odds. Looked as though he was getting back into some sort of nick with his batting again. Yes, 34 helped uh, Callum McLeod to uh, settle into his role of uh, steering Scotland all the way through the innings, really, because McLeod was second last wicket to fall, uh, having opened the batting. Well, it's getting to the shivering stage here, isn't it, at Tootwood today? Yeah. Temperatures dropped. The wind has increased and seems to be coming from all directions at once. And that's a nice shot from Bukhari. But uh, Michael Leesk is out there on the boundary to uh, save it from the boundary. And so only one run there, and that's the end of the over. They'll be pushing hard to get this over in because uh, you'll know this ground far better than I, Mike. But uh, I was always told that if the rain is coming, it usually comes from uh, roughly to the right of our commentary position here, and it's starting to look a bit filled in over there now to our right. So I don't think the rain is that far away if it's coming at all. Well, they say here if you can see the hill in the southwest area, it's going to rain. Sorry, if you can see the hill. It's not raining there, but it will be about to rain here. And if you can't see the hill, it's already raining. Yeah. <laughs> so Leesk has the task of getting us over the 20 over mark to make this a match that will have a result. And here he goes, first ball to Bukhari. And Bukhari hits a six from it. Absolutely brilliant. Clears the boundary by about 10 or 15 yards. No question about that, but uh, there's absolutely no chance of getting up to the Duckworth Lewis target from this over, so nobody will worry about it too much. Uh, Replay on the screen right now. Lovely clean shot. Lovely clean shot. Good use of the feet coming down the track to Michael Leesk. Promptly hit it back over the bowler's head, clearing Safian Sharif on the long on boundary here by a good 15 yards. Strong hit. By Carry. And the ball must have gone out of the ground because there's now the usual wait until somebody goes and collects it. And the uh, third umpire, Jim McClymont, is coming out with another <laughs> box full of alternative balls. Wonderful sight to see Ian Wardlaw there helping Mr. McClymont. Yeah, Wardlaw watching. <laughs> running out with the yeah, new balls as they see the rain approaching. <laughs> with five balls left the ball before the, the DL deal. kicks in. Pick well, a ball, guys, and pick one quick. All these funny rules that cricket has. Yep. Well, we've all been there, I think. And the crowd uh, being, being quite stoic, sitting out in this. Uh, lots of, uh, lots of um, overcoats and not. Um, cagoules and all that kind of thing. They're re really well wrapped up, but uh, they're enjoying the game, and there's a lot of entertainment here. Yeah, well, I'm looking across to my left and see uh, my two daughters and my wife sitting there. It looks as though they've probably sat in warmer days, to be fair. <laughs> Claire and Lindsay looking a bit cold. And that's, that's a big edge. edge. Big edge to Mark Petrie and Bukhari, having just scored a six, pays the penalty <laughs> in the very next ball. And another wicket to Leesk. Yes, another wicket to Leesk that uh, makes, is it three or four to Leesk? Sorry, I had, I, I, I'll have to count back in a minute. I'm trying to work out, Bukhari, number eight, made 11, did he? <laughs> and uh, Petrie showing his uh, class as a wicket keeper. He'll be keen to stake his claim to go uh, to the World Cup, of course, in February in Australia. 
He's one of several wicket keepers with a, a chance. Yep. Yeah. For Scotland. And we think the new batsman coming in, uh, if he had, didn't have a sweater on, would show the number 15, uh, Dice Van Skelven. Slow left arm bowler. Haven't seen, haven't seen him bat yet because he didn't play yesterday. And that was a defensive stroke. And another one, another dot ball for least, two balls to go. Yeah, he's going to be able to push this through quite quickly now, Mike. Another one of these breeds of left arm bowlers that bat right handed to Mike. I know, that's right. Very tiresome, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Difficult for us to. Last ball for Leesk, and that's another dot ball. So that's the end of that over. And the, the score is 102 for 7. And let's go for a break at this point. And uh, welcome back to Titwood in the uh, teeth of a gale coming from west to east with the occasional uh, blast of water coming down from the skies. Uh, but the Scots have managed to pl bowl 20 overs at the Dutch. And uh, there's uh, the first ball of Josh Davies uh, over, and their latest over. The score is 103 for seven now, but after 20 overs, uh, the game becomes an official game and the, the result will be a result whatever happen, happens weather-wise. Now, if the game stops right now, Scotland will have won uh, by a considerable distance because the uh, Duckworth-Lewis target currently sitting on the scoreboard uh, at this moment says that with seven wickets down, the Dutch should be on 250 if they had a chance of winning. Well, then 103 for seven and uh, Scotland are in a very strong position. There's Davy, and there's another ball that defeats the bat. Uh, I suspect we don't have very long to wait to the end of the game one way or another, whether it's weather or cricket. Yeah, they don't look particularly comfortable against Davy here. Davy's bowling a good spell. He's, um, as I said earlier, seems to be shifting the ball around a little bit. And, and I'm surprised actually Scotland haven't put a, a gully in catching here because uh, they seem to be looking to, to squeeze things down that way. And that was on the middle stump, so uh, defensive played by uh, Van Skelvin. Scotland's innings of 317 uh, really was uh, uh, a game winner, I would suggest, even at this stage, with 145 of those runs coming from Callum McLeod. There's Davy, and that was another very close edge, close to being an edge by Van Skelvin. This went straight through to Mark Petrie, who's standing a bit deeper, I think, for this pace. Possibly, but I think that might be Davy varying his pace slightly to see if he can get a bit more movement around. He's, he's, he's capable of pushing it back to where Mark Petrie is just now without problem. But, uh, you could be right. Carry seems to be varying slightly. That's a Faster pace ball, straight out to mid on. No run, five balls gone, one run scored in this over. And Scotland in total command of their, the result of this game. So now they're looking simply for wickets, and uh, here's Davy. 
last ball of his over, another dot ball, but uh, Kyle Kurtzer can afford now, I think, to be really aggressive with his field placing, I would have thought, uh, Bob. Well, I think in fairness to Kyle, he has shown a, a good deal of uh, clever captaincy there. He had um, short mid-wicket and short cover in earlier when uh, they were trying to force the pace, the Dutch, and they fell foul of that, a uh, few catches taken. And uh, we saw as well a, a burst of pace from Garden Main there. It brought two wickets from no balls, which might have made a difference as well. But uh, hopefully he's managed to iron out his, his no ball problem and uh, we'll see a little bit more of Garden before the end of the game. Well, the next ball we're going to see is Ian Wardlaw coming back again. Uh, just right at the onset of rain coming on yes. too, and it looks as though this is a bit heavier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Callum McLeod innings and the, the Scotland innings, Mike, was uh, exceptional and built on a few partnerships throughout the, the innings with Momsen and Davy in particular uh, two really strong partnerships there that carried the game away from the Dutch and um, the Dutch without uh, the regular skipper Borden today, I don't know if that had an influence on it at all but, uh, Anyway, it's Wardlaw <laughs> To Rippon, Rippon gets two, will he get three? Uh, well, thinking about it but uh, two runs to Rippon and um, Wardlow, of course, uh, he's attached to Yorkshire, plays a lot in the second team, like many Scots these days. <laughs> Here he is again. And another single pushed out by Ripon into the mid-wicket area. I think the excitement will drop at this uh, moment in time because everybody's waiting either for wickets or uh, rain. I think the latter looks possibly the, the more likely at this particular stage, mate. It's starting to get a bit heavier out there now and not pleasant for batsmen, bowlers or fielders alike. Or spectators for that matter. Oh. That's Mr Wardlaw pushing one through, letting <laughs> him know that he's still got a bit of pace up his sleeve. And uh, being signalled a wide. It wasn't that wide, was no, it? No, no, no. <laughs> um, Overhead wides are difficult to judge, but... Uh, I thought it been Mr Cooper. I don't think that I'd no, need a wide right. at six feet that's seven, right. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Mr Van Zelsen slightly smaller, so he's uh, been called for that, but I'm sure Mr uh, the umpire... Knows exactly what he's talking about there when he does that. He's seen plenty of them. <laughs> Mr. Dowdles. This game is full of mind games, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it was probably the same with um, Paul Van Meekern and the, the Dutch innings as well, because he got uh, a couple of wide deliveries given that went for four over the keeper's head. It showed how lively the pitch was. I think a uh, certain amount of credit to Clydesdale for producing pitches of this pace and quality now up here, despite the fact it's been uh, fairly inclement weather for much of the early part of the season here, and uh, it's good to see the wickets in such good condition. Well, these uh, have been specially chosen for this particular series of matches and retained, carefully looked after by Cyril McClatchy over the last uh, eight or nine weeks of the season and uh, the weather favoured his uh, preparations in the last week or two. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I spoke to Cyril at um, the lunchtime interval yesterday and uh, I was asking him what the difference was from last year's CB40 wickets and uh, he was saying that they had hoped to leave a little bit more grass on to see if we could attract a little bit more pace to them and it certainly seems to have worked. But well, he's an experienced hand, he knows what he's doing. His favourite saying is he can't do anything that the weather can't, doesn't allow him to do. Correct, and uh, right now he'll be getting ready to, to take some action, I think, um, with his ground staff to possibly protect the wicket for a few overs if uh, the rain doesn't start to ease off slightly. But it's been like this a couple of times, Mike, and it's gone off again, so hopefully we'll have that again this nice. time. Inside edge down to fine leg for four there for uh, Van Skelvin. And... Uh, they bounce glo gloves over against each other, the two batsmen. That's the end of the over. That could easily have been one of the wickets we were looking for there. And very late edge. 
just missed the stumps. Yes, absolutely. It's been one or two of those uh, in this game today. Here's a replay of that uh, last shot. Yeah, well, inside edges frequently go onto the stumps, don't they? But the score now is 111. And the rain on uh, our camera at the moment is showing uh, up very nicely. Uh, as the score goes, scoreboard goes up to 111 for seven, somebody has got to take their feet off the, off the ground at this stage. As uh, Rippon prepares to face... Gavin Main coming Gavin back on. Gavin Main, yes. Just Scotland turning back to pace. Well, at least he did his job extremely well. He was there to get through the overs quickly, but it was a bonus that he got the wickets as well. Gavin Main, and that's uh, off a thick edge down to a third man area, but Berrington collects, coming round from point. Just a single to Ripon. Score moves up to 112. I don't think Scotland will be too worried about giving away the single there to Michael Rippon, getting a chance to look at the other batsman. Runs really are not the issue at all now. It's no. wicked. So the, the tail of the rest of this match will be how quickly can Scotland get these th last three wickets and will they do it before the rain takes them off permanently? Because the rain is quite heavy again, it's, be, it's as heavy as it has been. Umpire Young having a look at the foot marks there again. Mr. Main needing just to pull that front foot back slightly. Ah, <laughs> there's the no ball again. Mm -hmm. A bit predictive there, perhaps. Yes. And a free hit being signalled. But there's, uh, they always say there's nothing more miserable than the cricket ground in the rain, but there's nothing as glorious as the cricket ground in the sunshine we had yesterday. Yeah, yeah, totally different uh, conditions. And that's high and over the uh, infield, but it won't get to the boundary. Can't see who that is that's chasing it over there. Kutzer, Kyle oh, Kutzer's Kutzer. down there, yes, the lone okay. figure backward of uh, the bowler. And the umpires having that death walk to meet in the, in the <laughs> middle there, Mike. Never a good sign if you're playing. Yes, yeah. they're coming off now. Off of the rain to the players. and Four balls into the 23rd over. The Dutch batsman looking a bit reluctant to go and the Scots fielders quite happy to disappear. And uh, as we watch them come off, I think we will try and relocate our commentary position uh, so that we're a little bit more in the shelter of the doorway. Uh, or other, other than that, I can, I've got an umbrella to offer you. Umbrella would be fine, I think, mate. <laughs> I'll I think go it's, it's brightening up to, away to my right here, so That's I think if we, if we are off, I don't think it's going to be on, off for too long. We'll, we'll get see. back on just as soon as the... But in a way, from both sides' point of view, the Dutch know they're not going to win. Yeah, and, uh, the Duckworth Lewis, they're sitting 142 runs behind now with... Uh, so both sides might 20. decide to shake hands and uh, call it a day? I think the umpires will be the deciding factor for that and give them probably a, a little bit of time here. They're, they're letting Cyril and his ground crew get on with the covers. We've got a bit of the covers there and perhaps we can come back to some play in about 20 minutes or so by the look of it. Um, it's certainly not looking as filled in now to my right, away to my right as it was, but as you say, um, it's now raining heavily here, so that always makes it difficult to to predict what's going to happen over the next spell. Well, I, I think what we'll do, uh, if uh, everybody agrees behind me in the control room, I think we'll take a pause here and uh, stop broadcasting. We'll put the splash card up to let you know that uh, we're still streaming. Uh, but there's not much point in us commenting on the uh, rain falling. So with... Uh, the scoreboard showing 115 for seven as the Dutch uh, uh, response to Scotland's 317 all out. Uh, and uh, with uh, 23 overs, or we're in the 23rd over at the moment, 
Uh, there will be a result, and if nobody comes out to play again, Scotland will have won this game. But if they do come out again, it'll be a question of time before Scotland do win it by taking all the ten wickets. So, thank you for watching with us for the time being. And uh, we're going to close down our broadcast at the moment, and we hope to see you again uh, later in the day. And if you can't uh, come back to us, then officially there is a third game here between these two sides on Friday, which would be a, a winner-takes-all uh, decider. But the forecast for that uh, day is not good, so you may not see very much from us on that day either. Nevertheless, I hope you've enjoyed the cricket coverage we've been bringing to you already, and we've certainly enjoyed uh, talking to you and showing you what's been going on. We may or may not be back. If we are, see you then. If we're not, goodbye.